Hi guys, I'm here to help you out a little bit with the simulation that you have to run for this lesson. Um, if you are in lesson number six, the scale of evolution, and you go to the link right here for the FET simulation, I'm going to show you um, what to do. So sometimes when a student is opening a simulation on their own computer, they don't have the same settings as I do. And so you might have to call me if you can't get it to run. Um, because sometimes like the, the um, what is it called? Java isn't supported by your web browser. So if I open mine on my Mozilla Firefox, then I have to like give it permission. Um, if I open it in Chrome, it automatically gives it permission. So you just have to kind of like see what's going to happen. And then you can call me if you're stuck or you can ask your parents or whatever if they can help you out. So this simulation has um, bunnies in it and there's a couple of things that are going on. So my bunny's probably going to die in a second, but um, you can add a mutation. So a mutation, if you recall from like the very beginning um, of this less of this um, class is a genetic change. It is um, accidental, like you don't get to choose any mutations. Um, but sometimes mutations are good if they are good and they help you survive and reproduce and pass on that gene to more of your offspring, then we would call that an adaptation. Sometimes mutations are bad and then you get eaten and then you die. And so then you basically go extinct because you don't pass on your genes. So that is what this is saying over here. Now, we're not going to change this up because we're not um, talking about dominant and recessive genes in this class. Um, and then we also have selection factors. So selection factor means things that can change um, like what, like your survival and reproduction. So like if you add wolves, wolves are going to eat the bunnies. So wolves have to be able to escape uh, or bunnies have to be able to escape wolves for them to survive. You have to have food, otherwise you die. So you can add food and you can add wolves to the simulation. Um, so you're going to need to, when you do this, um, I'm going to have to start the simulation over again because I only have one bunny. Oh no, I think my bunny died. Hold on. Reset all. Okay, yes, reset. So here's my bunny. I'm going to add a friend because you need a friend to uh, reproduce and have more bunnies. Okay, and then there's also going to be two environments. We're going to be at the equator and we're going to be at the Arctic. So I'm going to have you guys run the simulation and you're going to have to do certain things. Just so you know, you, you basically always need to add a friend, otherwise you don't have any other bunnies ever show up. And you're going to wait for these generations. So here's a generation, it is going, 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 and when it gets to this spot, we'll have more bunnies because more were born. Okay, if you don't add any wolves, of course, like, you know, what's going to happen? Send those in. Sometimes you're going to change and add a mutation. We're only going to do brown fur mutations here. Um, but let's go back to food right here. So we got to give the bunny some food. So you have to maintain balance between the food and the wolves. Otherwise your bunnies will all die. If they all die, all you have to do is push reset all and then you can reset again. So honestly, before you start following the directions, if I were you, I would just kind of like mess around a little bit with all these settings to see what, um, like just what it does. So, you know, anytime you have a simulation, it's, it's giving you an opportunity to do something that you can't do in real life. So even though bunnies uh, reproduce pretty quickly, we can't have multiple generations of bunnies that show up in just a few hours of class. So instead, we build a computer model. So the FET team, um, they built this computer model using real data for, um, for bunnies. And then that way we can see what would happen over multiple generations. We use simulations to do things that we can't do in real life. Um, if you've been hearing about coronavirus simulations, um, what they do is they take data from real life and they put it into a computer and then they run the math for it to see what could possibly happen. Do we know for sure that it's what would happen unless we observe it in real life? No, but we can get a pretty good guess. Like after you play this for a while, you could probably start predicting what's going to go on based on what you've observed so far. So I just wanted to let you guys know about that. Simulations are often used in science. Um, like for example, we can't go back to the Big Bang. So instead we use simulations of what we know it would have been like at the Big Bang. And then that's how we can get data about it, even though we weren't there. All right, have a good day.